Good, good for you as you gulp down your coffee, running late for work. Good, good for you as you push your cart around the frozen food section on your lunch break, dinner list in hand. Good, good for you with a calendar chock full of plans and kids to tuck in at night. Good, good for those of you who maybe like me have been wavering in the dark. We're just eating a pizza and watching reruns is safer and simpler than thinking about the government, the company men, or the biosphere. I don't need to tell you that the world has problems. I don't need to rattle off the statistics of monstrous income disparity or explain to you that an alarming number of indigenous communities in Canada have for decades blocked access to clean water. I don't need to point out that something is seriously awry when as a species we expect the mass starvation of children the world over. I do not need to point out to you that this planet is suspended in a gross measure of imbalance, because I think you already know. Maybe you're one of the lucky ones. Maybe you've worked hard your whole life to ensure that your children are taken care of, that you might retire in comfort, that you may give a little extra to those in need. Or maybe you're busting your ass to make ends meet, and you don't see how at the end of the day, when your back hurts and blisters are mounting on your feet, how anyone can expect you to try and change the world. And maybe when you see a crowd of demonstrators marching up the street towards you with their bongo drums, whistles, and signs of every slogan, you can't fathom why they bother. And when they shout at you en masse to join them, maybe you wonder why they think they'll, it'll make a difference. Neither they nor you are responsible for this global mess. You didn't gut anybody's pension, outsource jobs, or buy 7,000 acres of the richest farmland in Ontario to be desecrated in the name of profit. Is camping out in public, dancing in the street, writing letters to politicians, or signing a bunch of petitions really going to turn the world around? I don't know. But what I do know is that while Gandhi and Martin Luther King have long since passed through the annals of history, their dreams are rising again in the bodies of young and old everywhere. And like all freedom fighters before them, they too are being mocked today. And like you, they don't know if their actions will result in victory, but still they rise. They are standing, sitting, and sleeping conviction. Conviction that a better world is possible. Conviction that the crisis we face is not a scarcity, but rather inequality. Conviction that it is our responsibility as inhabitants of this planet to leave it a better place than we found it. Some will say this movement is too big to fail. Some will say it's too weak to win. I say it's too important not to try. Because one day, it will all be over, and in that moment when you return to the earth, tomorrow's children will be born, and they will know that you stood up. They will know that you refused to allow the caravan of rulers to leave the greed machine feel your power. They will know that despite all odds and the ridicule that spews forth from the mainstream media, yet you still dare to imagine a better world for them. This is a call not to arm, but to dream. A call to consider the possibility when people like you and I step outside of our comfort zones and say, no more.